Good afternoon, it's David Schlothauer in the Home Weather Office with my second 2023-24 winter weather forecast. You all loved my last one, so I thought it would be great to present you with a second one. Now, as we get into the active weather period this winter, be sure to check out my friends over at Prestige Weather Consulting. They do individual, one-on-one -on -one weather consulting catered to your local area. For more information, you can find a link to their website in the description down below and be sure to use the code DAVID for a 50% off discount for your first month. So the first pit stop in this video will be looking at the latest on El Nino that continues to grow across the central and eastern Pacific basin in the equatorial region. And so this look at the NOAA Coral Reef Watch Daily 5 kilometer sea surface temperature anomalies for September the 15th, 2023. This is delayed, by the way, about 24 hours. So that's this is the best we can give you. All right. So looking at the different regions, which NOAA uses to monitor where El Nino is, how strong it is, and everything like that. And they're really focused on the Nino 3.4 region, which right now is at 1.8 degrees Celsius above average okay these waters here are above normal and actually well above normal for this time of the year which is a declaration of a moderate to strong el nino event or more so like right now a strong el nino episode that is in place the el nino or nino 4 index is 1.2 celsius above normal the nino 3 region is the warmest right now or one of the warmest at 2.5 celsius above Above the long term average, and Nino 1 plus 2 is at 3.2 Celsius above the long term average. That is very, very warm by all means, exceptionally warm. You know, if that was in the Nino 3.4 region, we would be looking at a Godzilla or a Super El Nino episode. So what does that mean for the upcoming winter of 2023 and 24 with our jet stream that we really monitor throughout the winter months? Because wherever the jet stream is, is where we have really crazy weather patterns that do occur. Big storms, big snowstorms, strong winds, heavy rainfall, it's usually weather mageddon within these jet streams. So looking at the CFS model, this is for January, February, and March. So during the peak of the winter season, we can see that on your left side, we have the climate forecasting system version 2 model. And on the right side, we have the CAN SIPS model, which is a Canadian model um, in the climate uh, world to forecast these uh, weather patterns coming up. And so the blue line means that we have the polar jet. The green line is the subtropical jet. And we can clearly see from the CFS that this is uh, very much of an El Nino pattern. As you can see with this whole split off, we get that uh, ridge over, say, British Columbia as well as Alberta, Canada with lower pressure just off the coast of California, helping to steer these systems onshore into central and southern California into the deep south as well as the southeast with the polar jet moving into, say, eastern Alaska and then dipping down back into the Great Lakes bringing some cooler weather but not super cold since this uh, jet, the polar jet, is rather weak and it's kind of variable. And then, of course, uh, in the northeast, you can get big snowstorms. Now, on the CANSIPS model, it is, it's a little bit of an El Nino, but not as pronounced with the polar jet. We can see how there's uh, a weak ridge that is in place with a more stronger subtropical jet that is being funneled into central uh, California, including for the deep south and the southeast. So that's going to be another thing that we have to consider uh, for the upcoming winter of 2023 and 24 of January, February, and March. So looking at the latest air temperature anomalies, according to our two climate models that you see on the screen here for January all the way through March of 2024. By the way, I know I don't have December here, but I promise you it's not much different than what we might be seeing in January through March. The CFS model is on the left side and the CANSIPS model is on the right side. And so we can see the CFS definitely warm biased. Now I'm not saying if it's actually truly warm biased or not, if it's wrong or right. 
it really won't matter very much because again we maybe the cfs is right and the cancips is not so correct with its temperatures so you can see for the southeast on the cancips below average temperatures are a possibility while on the cfs that's not really going to happen. It looks to be warmer all the way throughout the United States, including for Canada, as we have um, a more uh, weaker polar jet uh, moving into the picture. And that's what you saw there on the last slide. Now, looking at precipitation here on the CFS, um, definitely above average for much of the West. Now, again, the CFS really not taking el nino into consideration at least for oregon and washington where i think you all are going to be pretty dry this winter with below average rainfall the cancips model seems to be a little bit more correct on that but also look at california look at for the desert southwest near average precipitation probably a possibility because of how the cancips forecasts these systems so it's really going to be a close call is the cfs right or is the cancips right but either way the two models have something in common is that the northeast could get some big 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 time storms this winter time and that will be reflected in my uh, winter forecast or my actual forecast that i drew up here it took me quite some time over seven hours just to make all the graphics so i hope you all uh, like that all right, so now looking at a closer range. Now, this is basically the the control CFS. So this is one model. This is not the ensemble or anything else like that. This is for December, January, and February. And of course, on the right side is, or no, wait, this is all the, the, the climate forecasting system. This is not comparing two of the models. So on your right side or left side is your precipitation. On your right side is actually your temperatures. And so uh, on the left side, lots of rainfall potentially for California, well above average from December through February of 2023 and 24. I know I put 2024 there because it kind of rounds it all out. The two months are in 2024, while December is 2023. So hopefully that doesn't confuse you very much. Now, as far as temperatures go, seems a little bit more realistic here as far as, say, Texas, uh, Southern California, Central, as well as, um, say, Arizona, likely to see above or wait, normal to below average temperatures. And then the northern tier, likely to see some warm weather. Uh, with below average uh, precipitation, as you could all see, look at Tennessee and Kentucky. I mean, possibly six inches below normal for the three month average, which is very substantial, including for the Great Lakes. But you can see here, we're hugging along the northeast coast. Uh, I'm disagreeing with the dry weather there. I think you're going to see some big snows this winter time. So looking at now, okay, so this is kind of the same thing, uh, kind of rounding it out from January, February, and March uh, for kind of the latter part of the winter season. And you can see for the deep south, for California, still remaining very wet, including for um, the northeast, but dry weather likely for the Great Lakes, for the northern tier, and temperatures are likely to be somewhat above average continuously there over the northern tier of the U.S., including for the Pacific Northwest. For February, March, and April, for kind of the late winter, early spring months, still above average precipitation likely for the West, including for the Deep South and the Eastern Seaboard with uh, some warmer weather there too. So maybe um, our Nor'easters might end early, but they start early too. That's kind of what my forecast would likely be. Uh, and then below average, of course, for Canada up there. Uh, after being really warm for December, it's going to cool off um, and take a little bit of time there. So maybe a cool spring for you all up there in Hudson Bay. So now what about my own precipitation anomaly forecast for the winter of 2023 and 24? This goes all the way from December all the way through late March. I want to make that clear with you all. Uh, the winter runs from December 21st through March 21st. So when we kind of look at the three-month overall look, you can see that San Francisco, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, which is in Nevada and California, above average precipitation likely 
I do predict. But look at this. For Jacksonville, for Miami, Florida, you're certainly going to have a really wet winter, I predict. New Orleans, Houston, Dallas, San Antonio, I predict a really wet winter this year. And then, of course, if you don't like the rain, you can go up towards the Pacific Northwest where Seattle, Portland are likely to see uh, below average rainfall or snowfall for your area. And that's because we have that ridge, that blocking ridge north of a low pressure system that is going to be setting up shop over um, the west coast of California. And then, of course, for the Great Lakes, you're looking at below average precipitation. Anything in between, you're looking at equal chances. So it could be above or below or just plain on normal is what my forecast actually is. So now looking at the temperature anomaly forecast for winter 2023 and 24, again from December through March. Uh, above average is what I'm thinking for, of course, much of the northern tier of the United States, the Pacific Northwest, but especially for the Great Lakes, most of the models or the climate models and their ensembles do strongly indicate that it's probably going to be a fairly mild winter. It's going to be cold than it is in the summertime, right? But it's not going to be like crushing cold where you have negative 20, negative 30 degree temperatures. We're not seeing any crazy Arctic outbreaks expected this winter season because of that El Nino. The polar jet's a little further north and the subtropical jet's a little stronger and a bit further north. And therefore, you're going to probably be seeing more milder weather because that zonal flow usually kicks out a lot of that Arctic air. For the deep south, though, like Texas, likely below average um, temperatures because you're going to have a lot of rainfall. You're going to have these low latitude storms uh, bringing in much cooler weather across the area. And so you can see for San Antonio, for Houston, Dallas, New Orleans, Jacksonville, Miami. Now, are you all ready for this? Time for that drum roll, folks. Play it in the background because I'm showing you now my overall impact winter forecast from December all the way through March. And this is how it's gonna look, I do believe. And we're just gonna kind of take this uh, step by step. So we're gonna start at the West first and then work our way to the East. So of course for California, I am expecting some pretty big storms, lots of rainfall, lots of snowfall for the mountains. That's that pink area, by the way, that means blizzard conditions expected. Okay, that's what my forecast is calling for. So yeah, if you're in San Francisco, if you're in Los Angeles, this winter is going to be your favorite. Just like we had last winter with a lot of atmospheric rivers, lots of powerful winds. Remember that bomb cyclone that reached Santa Cruz this year, you know, back in January? That thing was a masterpiece, um, brought a lot of impacts. Okay, so we're going to be seeing something similar to that um, this year, big storms. Damp weather for Portland, but dry weather for Seattle is what my forecast calls for. Yeah, you're going to get some rainstorms, but I'm telling you, it's going to be below average for this time of the year. Mountain snow for the Intermountain West, for especially, say, like the Four Corners, for the Rockies, for Idaho, as well as Montana. Mountain snow expected. Phoenix, um, you're looking at some wet conditions. And then for the Deep South, chilly and wet weather is also anticipated now as you all know i put it a small area from oklahoma and arkansas tennessee as well as northern portion there say of uh, mississippi as well as alabama you're going to be seeing some severe weather episodes not particularly strong maybe strong early on so like maybe like mid-december i think you might see some big severe weather events but as we get deeper in a winter time those severe weather events will actually get further south uh, because the jet stream gets stronger and it's more stable. If we go further north, a bit chilly conditions are expected over St. Louis. Well, on the border there, I should say. Kansas City, if you are in Omaha, Nebraska, a bit chilly. But now the further north you go, it gets colder. Even so, temperatures will be somewhat above average. Remember, though, your average is between negative 5 to negative 15 degrees. 
So it being in the single digits still is very cold uh, for the, you know, relatively speaking. Cold is cold for me, and it should be the same for you. So cold to very cold conditions over in Minneapolis, over Fargo, in the Dakotas there, Minnesota, in Wisconsin. You're looking at cool temperatures. Now, a lot of forecasters do not add this into their map. And actually, I want to thank um, Brendan, uh, one of my moderators that helped moderate my YouTube channel, uh, to adding that in. He was telling me that, David, you are probably by far the best winter weather forecaster because you actually take the time in adding in lake effect snow forecast into my uh, outlook. And so that's what I have here. This pink uh, across the Great Lakes illustrates lake effect snow possibilities that are anticipated like Buffalo, Watertown, New York. You can see quite a bit of lake effect snow because when we get these nor'easters that go up the eastern seaboard, we're going to get some cold air that's dragged um, southward from, say, Canada, and that could really unleash some big-time lake effect snows, especially over Buffalo and Watertown. I think you're going to have one heck of a snow season this winter. Uh, mild conditions over Chicago, St. Louis, as well as, say, Central Indiana, Kokomo, Indiana. If you're in Columbus, Ohio, Toledo, Ohio, I think you're going to see mild conditions. Now, time for the Northeast. Now, a lot of you were probably wondering about that in my last video. I I any new updates on that? And unfortunately, to some people, no, we don't. Big snows. We are talking probably one of the worst winters. And I don't like hyping this up to just get views. But we could be in some big, deep trouble, all right, over New York, over Boston, uh, right along the eastern seaboard here. We could be talking about feet of snowfall, possibly almost historic for the winter time coming up. So uh, big snows, nor'easters, blizzards, winter mageddon is definitely a possibility here, including for northern New Jersey. We could see some big time blizzards here. Possibly my expected snowfall uh, amount forecast. I don't have it here on the, in the PowerPoint, but I'm in the ballpark of say maybe two to ten feet, maybe even more than that potentially over some portions here of New Jersey, um, central and southern portion there of New York, including for say New Hampshire as well as Vermont and Maine. Could see a really bad nasty winter and overall this winter i do believe it's going to be even worse than last winter because not only we have the nor'easters for the east coast of the u.s but we also have the big storms that california could be facing and i mean uh i'm excited for this winter we we're, we're probably going to have big problems ahead. So I sure hope you all enjoyed this winter 2023 and 2024 forecast. This is the updated version. I will be making another one and that will be released sometime in October. So if you like this one, why don't you wait for my next one that comes out in mid October at least, maybe late October. That will be my final winter forecast, I believe. Maybe I'll make another one for mid-November um, because, again, I do enjoy making these videos for you all, and I, I, I hope you all like the colorful map that I presented in today's video. But if you did, please subscribe. It really helps out a lot. You guys are really awesome. So I sure hope you all like this video, and I'll be back with you more tomorrow with a uh, U.S. weather forecast.